Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting week of Stormgate Esports. So I'm going to be running through the balance update. I'm not going to be talking in detail about all of the changes. We're going to talk about that near the end of the video. But the one thing that I wanted to highlight here is that the, <laughs> the Alpha Navigators Cup, which is a tournament that I ran, was uh, mentioned here, which is pretty fun. And just in general, I really like what uh, Monk did here in the blog. You will, of course, find the link to this and everything else that I talk in the video in the description. But kind of talking through some of the ideas and some of the reasons behind the changes in the patch, which I think is really nice to communicate to people not only why the changes were made, but the general philosophy that the team is going to be going with uh, into the future, into potential future patches. We have no idea if there is going to be another patch uh, in the coming future, but it definitely feels like they want to kind of observe and see what is going to be happening with the game and how the balance evolves, particularly looking at the competitive side of the scene. So heading into our first tournaments, we had the Alpha Navigators Cup 15. This was the Americas bracket, which was dominated by European players, of course, as one does. Uh, and there were a lot of players here. There were 40 players uh, signed up and checked in. So 40 players in the Swiss bracket, and I expanded it to be a top 12 in that case, because I felt like there was quite a lot of talent there, and I wouldn't want it to be cut off super quickly and the eventual winner was Mixu with Vanguard in a just monstrous performance against Captain Alex Celestials. Captain Alex gets another semi-final spot but you know still searching for that win here but a lot of really good cool names here. Kel as well had a pretty good performance and of course everybody we're talking with balance and we're gonna touch on that. Vanguards were seen as very, very weak, and I think if you ask Mixu, he still believes that some of these matches are unwinnable, even though he won 3-2. But yeah, that exists. If you want to watch those matches, by the way, Beomulf and Killer Pigeon actually co-casted those in their channel, so I will have links in the description below so that you can check them out. They're obviously making Stormgate content, and I highly recommend you go and check them out, as well as The Real Nanaman and Tukutai, which are two other streamers that have taken it upon themselves to be casting Tank on the regular, which I certainly appreciate, and I'm sure the players do as well. On the European side of the table, it was Bosi who won against, once more, Captain Alex, getting his uh, third second place finish so far in Season 1 of the Alpha Navigators Cup in a 3-2 series as well. This um, does showcase a little bit more how Vanguards might be falling behind. And of course, the matches were quite a bit different now with Creeps taking such a central role, but it was nice to see a little bit of faction variety, and I think Captain Alex has been taking the sort of vector opening quite far um, in the tournaments, particularly in Tank. So that is Tank done for the week. We had an invitational tournament, which was the Infolet Tournament 1. This was organized by Snogstar, sponsored by Infolet Securities, Infolet IT, uh, an IT company. And it was casted by Beomulf and Killer Pigeon, who was in and out for a, a little bit on that. But also, pretty good match. There was a lot of action on all of the matches. I think they were all very, very good. And a 3-2 finals in a Infernal Mirror feels pretty nice to see as well. I think these matches were pretty interesting. I think Prime Scout was doing some very interesting things with Vanguard as well. And this was on Sunday, so just a, a day ago. Looking then into our calendar. So for this week, we're now on the week of the 12th. We have on the 15th the Stormy Skirmish, which is just a little show match. And there was a new tournament announced, the Goblin Clockfest, an open tournament. And we're going to see the details there. And this is being organized by, I want to say his name is Apollyon. We're going to read it properly. And uh, Chicken Man. So they're organizing a little open tournament with a $100 prize pool that everybody can sign up to, but we'll get to that in a second. So, Stormgate Skirmish is just a very simple uh, show match between Parting and Theory, both Aftermath players, both really good players. Uh, we haven't seen Parting play in tournaments yet. He has only kept himself to invitationals and show matches, so I'm very interested to see when Parting actually goes to an open bracket. I really want to see him and a lot of other people, people like Elaser, like Mana, uh, throw themselves at an open tournament 
and see how far they go because obviously they are talented StarCraft players, but I think uh, seeing them in an open bracket and go through that gauntlet would be much appreciated, at, at least on my side. So the tournament that was announced was the Goblin Clockfest. So it is uh, Apotheosis, there we go, sorry that I butchered your name before, and Chicken Man SC, so Apotheosis is an aftermath content creator, and Chicken Man is an organizer and content creator that usually does a lot of StarCraft stuff, so it's almost natural for him to try out a few things here in Stormgate. So $100 for the prices, top two. They also have a Macharino, where if it gets to $200, they will pay out the full top four. Um, and at the moment, they are sitting at 20 players registered, so you can go ahead and throw your name into it. As far as I know, it's completely open. So it says cap to 16 players, so we'll see. Maybe if you're a very high-level player, you should throw your name out there. Maybe you'll be one of the 16 players selected, but we'll see. Something that is going to be finishing off this week on Sunday, it's going to be the Czech Stars playoffs. So Czech Star is this regional sort of local tournament even where uh, you have Czech and Slovakian players competing against each other. Pretty big group, honestly, for how small that region is conceptually. And they're going to be finishing their group stage this week and then have the playoffs on Sunday. So those are going to be six players advancing. Uh, with the top player in each group having a buy into the semifinals. So this should be pretty entertaining. I think that there are a lot of really good names here. Captain Alex should be somebody that, you know, if you've been watching this video, so if you've been watching Tank, you should be very familiar with, same as KRS. So definitely looking forward to what these players put out here in the playoffs on Sunday. Now a little bit forward into next week, a little bit uh, over 100 players for the Aurel Stormgate tournament. Very happy to see that. Um, it's going to be a big competition, so best of luck to Ariel and everybody involved. Hopefully a lot of players will be familiar with rule sets and uh, what they have to do so that maybe they can help out the bracket a little bit and, and manage all of that. But very happy to see a big turnout, and you know if you haven't registered yet, go ahead and do it. It's an open tournament, it's always a bit of fun. The round of 128 has actually been changed from best of one to best of three. It was a little suggestion that I made in Ariel. Uh, thought that was valid so now it is a best of three so you're not going to be going out on a single game give it a try see how that turns out and the last item before we talk about the meta for just a little bit is the stormgate nexus tournament and the reason that we're talking about this even though it's about two weeks out still it's because we have the invited participants so obviously these are players that are Top of the line, they've been invited to other tournaments before, and they're going to get a buy into the round of 16 here for the Stormgate Nexus. These are going to be Denver, a French player, Vanguard player, very good top player. Uh, repping the Vanguard is also Lucifron, who we've seen compete um, in the EGC Open before. He had really good results there. He doesn't really sign up for a lot of tournaments nowadays, but he's certainly a top player, and I think he's going to do really well here too. Probe, who won the Tasteless Showdown, is also going to be there as the Vanguard, I presume. I don't know if he's going to be switching to something else. Obviously, the meta being what it is, he might decide to experiment with something else. But he is very smart. He's very talented when it comes to adapting to what the game is throwing at him at the moment. So I'm sure that he'll find his footing, and, and, I, and I do see him going very far into this bracket. For the Infernals, you have a laser parting theory and Vortex. Of that grouping, I think Parting and Vortex have the best to go really far as Infernals. I definitely think Vortex, he's like top two in the ladder. He's fighting for top one every single day. So I definitely think he has it on lockdown in terms of the ability to develop that. Like I said before, maybe if there is a patch before this, everything could be a little bit more equalized in terms of the factions. But at the moment, I think Vortex... <coughs> sorry could go as far as parting in the bracket but i wouldn't throw out a laser and theory either they are really really good players and definitely could have a bit of an upset if they face one of these others uh invited players finally mana mana had an unfortunate uh egc open back at the start of the year in february but now he's coming in and he's looking really good at celestials he's having he's playing on the ladder pretty consistently and I've seen quite a few of his streams and he's really trying to dissect the game at a basic level to to get a good feeling for it so even though he's the only invited Celestial player I definitely don't think that he will be the only one uh, I 
think he might not even be the best one of the Celestial players that get into here from the different qualifiers, but we'll see how that turns out. Obviously, everything could change uh, in due time. So, speaking of change, what do I think about the meta now? So we have that balance patch, and I'm not going to be going through every single detail. Like I said, I'm not really interested in kind of dissecting every little number change, but I do think there are some interesting ideas here. I think overall the patch was a net positive, and we're only a few days after the patch, so people are still figuring out everything that they want to do uh, in terms of how Celestials play with a one base vector, which has been the core fundamental strategy that Celestials have used against the Infernals, against Vanguards, and even against each other in some cases. So I definitely think that there might need to be a little bit of an adjustment there with the Vectors, and it's kind of unfortunate that the Celestials were so dominant in that rush strategy at the very start of the Early Access, because I think it kept some of those other problems hidden from the larger player base in terms of, you know, the vectors were never really a factor because you were always rushing. And that kind of made it a little bit hard to sort of find that out. Uh, in terms of Vanguard, I think Vanguard are in a complicated position. There are a lot of units and abilities near the late stages of the game that either have stun or that are channeled in some way. And Vanguards don't really have something that can counter that they have vulcans with which have the impact jets and that can stun enemies that are in the path but only the first enemy in the path so it's not like they can go after say for example the hexans that are casting miasma and obviously the miasma plus the infest deals a ton of damage and is very very powerful against mass of for example the exos so it's a bit difficult to say i think even with those uh, balances issues aside, there is still another larger issue that should be addressed. I wouldn't say like immediately, but I do think it necessitates some action in the near future, which is creep camps. Now, I personally adhere to the philosophy that creep camps should be a core component of the early game in Stormgate. I think they are an interesting idea. I think they provide an incredible design space for France Jan to do very interesting things. Uh, and even though we only have like a, a small selection of creep camps in terms of their passives and their abilities and the creeps that defend them, I think going forward into the future, looking for uh, like half a year or a year after early access, creep camps could become one of those things that seasonally change and become much more interesting. But right now, the way that they provide resources and the amount of resources that they provide in the early game feels incredibly punishing for the other player because if you're not out taking creep camps it's not that you're just not getting resources it's that your opponent is getting more resources than you and it creates a very heavy snowball effect that i think a lot of players are struggling to match i don't think this is as much of an issue on lower level matches because people are naturally more defensive Players don't really like to go out of their way into the map because they feel like they're going to be threatened, whereas top players are generally far more confident in their ability to defend attacks into their base, particularly if they are small raids. And that means that they are more happy to go out in, into the map, get those resources, and you, we would see fights for those creep cams. But the problem is that it's much better to go for the camp once it has been destroyed or to go for a camp that hasn't been taken yet uh, than to try to fight for control of a, a specific creep camp at that moment. So I think that will need to be adjusted and observed over a longer period of time. Uh, but the overall balance of the matches, I think they are better than they were before. They still could do a little bit of work. I'm not a top player, but I'm sure that Frosjan is listening to a lot of top players in that regard. And I mean, of course, if you're watching this and you have your own experiences, don't leave it in my comments. Go ahead and leave it in the Discord where they have a specific feedback channel when I'm sure they are going to be listening to what everybody's putting forward. Even if you don't think you have like a, a fully formed opinion, just getting an idea of the sentiment that players are having about the game, I'm sure is of a lot of benefit. So anyway, that is the video for this week. Thank you once again, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoy the tournaments that are going to be happening over the course of this week and into next week, which is 
it's gonna get busy fellas so go ahead strap in and get ready for some very long tournaments that are gonna be very fun to watch and to analyze later but that is all for me have a good one and goodbye